All right, guys, before we jump into this video, real quick, if you're new around here, please consider subscribing, click that like button, and click that notification bell so you can get notifications of my upcoming videos. Also, please leave me a comment down below. Let me know what was your first DJ setup. Maybe what would you change? What would you have bought differently? This whole video is just for the, for the new guys, and I'd love for them to be able to read your guys' comments. Let's jump right into it. <laughs> What's going on my friends? DJ Lowstacks here. Welcome back or to the channel and uh, welcome to the off season. So I officially did my last event of the season uh, just this past Saturday. So today's Sunday. So last night I had an ugly sweater party for uh, one of the bars here in town and that was my official last gig for the 2022 season. So I got the trailer unloaded and stuff and I was just kind of looking at my gear and all the things that I own. And I wanted to make this video. So I've had a lot of questions about um, gear and what I use and why I use it and all that type of stuff. You know, lots of people asking for, I guess, advice on what stuff to buy, right? If I were to start over all over again, um, obviously I wouldn't be, I probably wouldn't be able to afford most of the stuff that I have now because I've been building my arsenal of gear for the last 15 years. I wouldn't expect anybody to be able to go out or even want to go out and drop that kind of an investment right off the get go. So I wanted to kind of point out the things that I think are most important and the pieces that you should focus on. And hopefully the goal of this whole video is honestly just to save you guys some money and kind of help jumpstart you know, your, your career as a, as a DJ, mobile DJ anyway. So we're gonna be focusing on the mobile, mo the mobile DJ piece. Uh, most clubs, you know, they're gonna have equipment there already, that type of thing. So you're basically just going in with your laptop, hopefully. That's how most of that kind of works out. I'm gonna put these in what I think is the most important order. We're gonna go from least important to most important. I would say the least important piece, still important, but least important is gonna be lighting. Um, you know, lighting is something that you can build on later. Like you don't need $5,000 stereo tubes or $6,000 moving heads and that type of stuff to get started. I would recommend one of two things. One would probably be your most, your, your, your cheapest investment or way to get in would be a gig bar. So a lot of people talk trash on gig bars. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of them. I do own one and I use it for some smaller events where lighting may not be super important, but I still want a little bit of something. You know, it goes on a T-bar or you can use one of those gravity stands or Chave has the their version of the gravity stand. You can use that. So um, first option would be a gig bar. Second option, which I think would be even a better option, would be some sort of battery powered up lights. And the reason I say that is especially if you did like the like the Chinese Ape Labs or the Ape Labs, if you can afford those, you can hang those from a T-bar if you wanted to. So you could put four of those on a T-bar and then you could also put a few around the room or you could just put them around the room or whatever, you know, but if you bought an eight pack, you could put four of those on a T-bar and then the rest of them kind of around your setup, maybe light up your facade or, you know, whatever. Um, I think that would be probably the best way to go. The Chinese Ape Labs lights, you can get eight of those for like six or 700 bucks shipped to your house. Um, gig bar is gonna be around like the three or $400 range, so a little bit cheaper. Yeah, first thing is definitely gonna be lighting. You know, you need lighting. Second, and some people might disagree with me on this, second as far as least important goes. So we're going least important to most important in my opinion. So second is gonna be a mixer slash controller. Um, now the reason I say this is the least important is because as long as you have something that works and that you can mix on, you're good to go. So whether it be, uh, you know, like a Pioneer, one of the Pioneer controllers, even though it's one of the smaller ones, or, you know, a lot of people like Denon, you could use a, a Denon controller or like the Rain One or, you know, whatever. Um, get yourself some sort of a controller. As far as software goes, use what works best for you. I'm a Serato user. I'll probably never steer away from Serato. So if you can get something that runs off Serato, that's what I would recommend, obviously. Um, but you know, virtual DJs out there, record box, lots of other software. So, you know, get yourself a controller, something that preferably has XLR outputs, um, cause that's going to be a little bit better sound quality, but <clears throat> definitely, you know, a controller with XLR outputs, if you can do it, brands or things like that, I don't think it's a big deal. Just get something that works. It's got two jog wheels that you can mix on. That's what you need. Two channels is enough. If you can get a four channel, great, but stick with two if you can. Um, that's the number, 
I guess two thing on my list. Number two. Third, third most important piece is going to be speakers. So this is some uh, somewhere where I definitely wouldn't skimp too much, but get yourself something that's you know decently powerful. Um, you know, I would try. You know, Mackie's a great a great entry level brand. Um, if you can get a set of Mackie 15s or something like that, uh, or you know, if you, that's that's going to be your best bang for your buck you know, to get in to get in there. Um, it's going to be something like that or maybe some of the entry level JBLs like the Eons or something like that. Um, if you can get two tops and a sub, I would recommend if you're not gonna get a sub, get a 15 inch speaker. Um, you know, some people are probably gonna bash me in the comments for all this stuff, but I think that's a, a good starting point. You know, get yourself a, a pair of 15s, whether they're Mackie, JBL, EV. You know, EV is also a great brand that's got some, some entry level some stuff um, but you know i would steer away from your uh, your behringers and your altos and uh harbingers and like that type of stuff that's going to be uh you're going to be you're going to want to upgrade sooner rather than later if you went in a direction like that not to bash brands or anything but that's just my personal opinion try to stick with one of the more reputable brands if you can afford like rcf or something like that um you know or the, the ev the evol 50s or the RCF J8s are a great starting point, but plan on spending, you know, I would say minimum $1,500 to $2,000 on a nice set of speakers. So fourth thing, and uh, this is gonna be second most important, I guess. So I, I probably should have done this in reverse, uh, uh, five, four, three, two, one kind of thing. So uh, fourth or second, however you wanna put it, is gonna be a good, solid, wireless microphone. So I would recommend a wired mic for yourself and a wireless mic for your uh, guest speeches and that type of stuff. You know, there's lots of great brands out there. You know, Sure, I use Sennheiser. Um, I'm using the, you know, the EWD uh, digital stuff, but you know, plan on spending $500 minimum on a good mic. Um, you know, $500 to $1,000 on a good mic. I would not recommend going out and spending $200 on a microphone and worrying about it dropouts and failures and things like that, because that's the last thing that we need to be worrying about as a DJ is our microphones dropping out you know just uh you know i'm not a big fan of the whole buy once cry once philosophy but in this particular instance i definitely think buy once cry once on the wireless mic is gonna be your best bet uh, you want to have a good wireless mic so um lots of options out there but uh spend some decent money on that like i said sennheiser sure um even the ev mics are, are good no that'd be my, my direction there uh the sennheiser g4s i've got I've, I've really only got experience with sennheiser but the sennheiser g4s are great mics and then the ewd uh you know digital that i have um are are also you know great as well i actually have four of those so um really good mics last but not least and I think that this is probably the most important piece of your whole beginner rig is going to be this right here. This is an external mixer. So this is the first mixer that I ever bought. And this is actually what kind of stemmed this video is I found this in a box up here on the shelf as I was kind of organizing. And I got to thinking about how much of a game changer it was when I first started using an external mixer. So the preamps and things like that on your controllers and mixers aren't that great. So running everything through a mic mixer like this is going to make your entire setup sound so much better. It's gonna give you way more control over all of it and you can tie it all into this right here. So you can even run out of this into a recorder or things like that or if you've got a videographer that wants to tie in, they can tie directly into this. It's just a super versatile tool and I think it's probably one of the most important and most overlooked pieces of gear uh, in a lot of people's setups. Like my, my rig right behind me, that's my, my big uh, reception rig for weddings. Uh, I have the um, the QSC Touch Mix 8, so I can control all my stuff from an iPad. My other booth, uh, my other 55 inch booth, that one has got an RCF uh, six or eight channel mixer. Um, this one here is a 12 channel, but so you run your, your DJ console into one channel, so you have complete control there. You run your wireless mic into one channel, so you got control over that. And then you can run several other other wireless or wired mics. So I usually have a wired mic on one channel, a wireless on one channel, and then my DJ setup on the third channel. Then you have master control of, uh, of it all through, like this one's got a slider. Some of them have knobs. 
So you got master control over all that. Yeah, guys, I think that's definitely the most important piece piece of gear that you can that you can that you can buy is going to be an external mixer. Um, you don't got to spend a ton of money on them. I think that Behringer one was like right around two hundred dollars. Plan on definitely making sure you get one of those. And then honorable mention is going to be you know cables and things like that. Make sure you're buying good high quality cables. I like Hosa a lot. Um, the Livewire cables from Guitar Center are great too. They've got a you know a warranty on them. Uh, but Hosa Livewire, don't skimp on the cables. Get get good cables. And also another honorable mention, do not use colored extension cords. Make sure you're using nice black cables. They're not that much more expensive. You can get all that stuff on Amazon. I'll leave some links down in the description to some stuff that I would re definitely recommend. Hopefully this video was helpful, guys. I know it's kind of a quick one. Uh, I hadn't filmed one in about a month, so I wanted to get something out to you guys and this just kind of popped in my head, so I figured I'd get recording. Well, as always, guys, if you're new around here, please consider subscribing. Click that like button and click that notification bell so you can get notifications of my upcoming videos. If you could do me a huge favor, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your beginner DJ setup was and how you kind of got into the game. I'd love to hear your stories. Peace.